My name is Total Biscuit, and I suck at StarCraft 2. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I still suck at StarCraft 2. Welcome to another episode. I'm in Platinum now, which means the suckage only gets harder against this man. He is Destroyer, and he is playing Zerg. The Red Trunks to the southwest of Star Station versus me, Axiom Shoutcraft US. The only time I could ever get into a pro team is if I made my own. There we go. There's the excuse. That's why Axiom existed. I wanted to slip myself in there unnoticed. Okay, so I reached Platinum. I'm not really sure how that happened. Apparently my macro improved or something like that. So I actually had a really rough session the night before. Really bad games. Like I won maybe one of them against a one base all inning Protoss and I lost every other game. I just got absolutely wrecked. It was really horrible. It's mostly down to bad macro, bad control, and bad reading as well. So that was fairly dreadful. So I got up this morning, I thought, hey, I'll play another game. See how it goes. Now in this case, I was intending to open up pretty standard as I tend to against Zerg. You should go one Rax Gasless Expand. These days, I mean, I usually place it down the low ground, but these days I've been getting a little bit... Let's just say a little bit worried about just dying to all in, so I've been putting my CC up on the higher ground and then just lifting it down. I figure with someone with my weak macro, it doesn't actually matter that much anyway, because I won't be able to spend the money fast enough, so I might as well play it safer and not just die to an all in. Should be seeing Hatch first here from Destroyer, you would think. Any any minute now. No, you're gonna maybe there we go. A little bit a little bit late on the hatchery there for a destroyer. A little bit unfortunate, but hey. He'll get that down. And he'll be able to get a spawning pool up at a pretty quick time as well, so, you know, not really a big deal. The question is, what, is I, what do I intend to do after that? Because one Rax Gasless Expand is not a build, it's an opening. You've got to think about how you intend to follow that one up. How do you intend to follow that one up? Well, for me, I've mostly been playing Biomine, for the most part. I've been using drops a lot, because drops are really, really good and they're hard to handle. The problem with drops, of course, is that they're micro-intensive, which means that behind it, if you're a really bad player like me, it's very hard to keep up with your macro. So you're microing a drop, you're microing a drop, and then you are building up huge amounts of resources that you can't spend because you don't have enough of these barracks and production facilities. The worst thing is when you just like, it's okay, I've got great macro, guys. I can spend 2,000 minerals by just holding down the A key. It doesn't really work that way. You're not a Zerg player. You can't do that. If you queue up five things at a time, then that's kind of just bad. You're not building units as fast as you could be building them. Those stacked up units could be extra barracks, which could be then more units you can build at the same time later on, if you get where I'm going. Okay, so I'm building the command center here on the high ground, so everything's going pretty well here. This is actually a game that I'm fairly happy with because according to the end game stats, I spent a very low time supply blocked. I also didn't get supply blocked at my usual time of 27. I was sort of more on top of that this time around. Just building marines here for the most part. I'm going to put a bunker down just so I've got a little bit of defense here. My opponent is... he's got a pull up and he's actually mining four out of three in the gas. Easy mistake to make. I've done that before. Again, it's not really that important at this level. It's not going to be the crippling thing that ruins his game, is it? So he's going to have enough for Metabolic Boost in a second. I'm scouting just to try and find him. I scout in all the wrong positions, which can happen every now and again. And I added a second barracks here because I was floating quite a lot of money. So I'm like, all right, I've got to ramp that production up. And I also need to get my refinery because I need to start teching. And if I can't tech, I can't do anything. Drone gets unluckily caught out there. The AI pathing meant that it actually went here instead of going up the ramp because it knew my ramp was blocked off. Which is unfortunate, that means I was able to kill his drone and he didn't actually learn a damn thing. He didn't even know about the expansion or the bunker at the front here. He's going to build eight lings in the meantime. Instead of building drones. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I mean, since he has no defense, I could have just pushed across the map. The, the hilarious thing about this is right now I could have actually just pushed across the map and killed them. Or at least done a lot of damage. Six marines versus eight lings. Yeah, I would have definitely taken that fight. That would have been pretty good. He's actually floating a lot of money. This guy is a higher ranked Platinum than me, which is why I was kind of surprised to see it when I looked at the replay afterwards. Like, really? Like, where, what is he doing with all this? Well, the thing is, he's not doing anything with it. Uh, you can stack up lava, don't get me wrong, but you can't, at the early game, you can't stack up that much lava to actually make a huge surge. So, it's almost like, you know, let's pause it and find out what he's doing, because I'm really, really curious. I want to know exactly what he's doing there, because he's not building anything. And 
it's really odd to me. Okay, we're gonna lock to his camera and we're gonna see what he does here. Okay, so let's speed it up to two times. Okay, so this is the stuff that he's focusing on. He's here. He's looking at this. He's looking at this. He's looking over here. And he's just not building units. It's really weird. <laughs> it's like, what, what are you waiting for? And now he's controlling his lings a lot, which, again, is not really needed. If you're going to scout, then there's no need to do that. He sees my scout. He brings his lings back to kill that. He now starts to build a bailing nest, and he's floating like 1,500 minerals. Well, that would explain a lot of things. It's really odd to do that. As I said, you can save up a lot of lava. and He, he actually is. Is that what he's really doing? I think that because he, he's not missing injects that much. He is legitimately building up so much lava that he wants to go for this huge ass push. So this is a, this is an all in, a massive all in. The reason is he's got no tech behind this. All he's doing is now surging units. 16 lava there. He's going to build a bunch more lings, I would imagine. And then he's going to try and attack me. So he comes in. I know he's got a bailing nest, which is why I put down a couple extra bunkers. It's like, all right, he's got a bailing nest. I need to be prepared for that to hit me. I put down a fourth bunker here, and he's going for this massive all-in. Huge. 14 banelings, bunch of lings. This... And if this fails, then he is so far behind, it's not even funny. He's on 22 drones. Comes in with 14 banelings and 18 lings. He's building another 30 behind this as well. So I prepare as best I can for defense. I don't. I, Stim is about to finish here. But I don't think I actually use it properly. I could have used Stim here to do more damage. It would be nice to have a Widow Mine up the front. I start building one. So he smashes the first few bunkers out. I back off as best I can. I end up getting surrounded here. I'm not using Stim here, which is really dumb. I could be killing a lot more. The guys in the bunker could have stimmed without too much of a problem here. Most of my army gets cleaned up. But I'm still on 40 SCVs. And I'm building units consistently. So I'm actually queuing up way too many here, which is really, really stupid. But I actually have Marines behind there, so I'm able to clean this up, and he kills no workers, really. So that's pretty disastrous. Now, what happens when you fail your all-in, folks? All-in again! All-in again. 22 drones versus 40 SCVs. Let's all-in again! This is what you just don't want to be doing. Like, in this situation, you probably want to be taking a third, because it's like, oh, I'm so far behind. Or do something sneaky, because if you have- This is a weaker all-in than the first one. The first one actually had more units in it. This is 28 Zerglings, and then as many Banelings as you can come in. He actually just goes for a straight-up Ling run-by. A lot of Lings get killed by the Widow Mine there as well. He does have enough to kill the stuff I've got at the front, and my bunker isn't quite finished either, so he's gonna make his way into the middle line and start to do some damage. So I'll pull my SCVs away as much as possible, and then randomly fire on the unbuildable plates for no apparent reason. I lose an SCV here and there, and I'm gonna end up losing this Marauder eventually. So I'm doing my best to sort of kill him off here, but he's not building anything. He's floating a huge amount of resources and he's, you know, it's really just not doing anything whatsoever. So as Marines continue to come out here for me, I should be able to clean this up. I lose some mining time, but I'm on 45 SCVs versus 22 drones. And I think the only real lesson here is that the look at the massive difference between someone that continually builds workers and someone that doesn't. Yeah. You can kill off half my workers and I will still be ahead of you. I've got more tech than you have because you've not built anything. I'm building more units than you are. And look at my income. It's absurd. Like, I'm way, way ahead of you. Even if you attack me here, it doesn't actually matter. Now, I don't know how the hell he managed to do that, actually. I just want to zoom back on that because I, he killed a few of my workers with a Baneling. I want to know where he hit it. Let's go and have a look. So, he does this. da 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 I don't believe it. Wow, I'm such a dumbass. Look at this. I actually let him do this. I wonder how many workers he kills with it. Because that's pretty cute. That's actually really good and a terrible mistake by me. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's actually kind of painful. Yeah, 11 workers killed total. So he's playing good catch up here. But at the end of the day, I, I said I was still building workers. I'm actually not right now. Come on, build workers, build workers, build workers, build workers. Not building workers. And I'm floating a bunch of money here as well. And I think it was mostly because I was focusing on controlling that. And only now do I build more workers. And now he's surging 14 drones. So all of his attacks have really failed. He's playing catch up, but he's still behind. If I was building workers throughout this, I'd be on like 50 workers now. So think about that. Think about just how important that is. Just nailing down worker, 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 worker over and over again. He takes a third and a fourth base. Now... It's like, all right, I haven't done enough damage. I've got to do that. But you've got no units to stop me. So I get my drop ready. And I go in here. So I drive away some mining. Kill a f like, 
actually like no drones at all. And this was a terrible drop. Drive everyone away. I pick them up because I know he's going to intercept me. He miss rallies. Actually, doesn't miss rally at all. He rallies there and now moves into position. You see how annoying this is? Like this is actually a situation where I would say to any Zerg player, build at least one spore crawler because I can keep doing this till the end of time. The question is, what am I doing behind this? Because I'm controlling this drop. Am I building units behind it? Yes. I queued up a bunch of workers, which is bad, don't get me wrong, but I'm still at least building them, yeah? And then I go in for a drop, I'm still controlling it, but I'm still building stuff in my production tab. He's not building anything. He's not He's not building anything. He has 13 lava, he's not building anything. He's got no Roach Warren, he's got, he hasn't teched up. And I'm really, I've got to say, I'm not entirely certain how this guy got into plat. Don't get me wrong, platinum's bad. But this is silver to bronze league stuff because he's just not building anything. He's floating 2,000 resources of Zerg on four hatcheries and he hasn't teched. He's got 700 gas and he hasn't gone to lair. He hasn't even built a roach warren or an evolution chamber. It's just bizarre. Like, has he actually got to platinum just by all inning here? Now, I've got to say, like, this is pretty cute. I actually used the Spore Crawler against him here. I dropped him in such a position that he couldn't really get near me. I had the Marauder at the front, and it had plus one armor against unupgraded Lings, which means those Lings are hitting for, like, three. So I actually kill all the Zerglings, and the Spore Crawler ends up being a piece of defense for me. So this drop continues to do damage, and it's 150 to 52. You know, I think this is a prime example. I did not play well here, but this is the very large chasm that opens up when it's a guy who's macroing versus a guy who isn't. Think about it. Do you really, really, really want to win that badly early game that you think it's a good idea to this big Ling Baneling all in? Is that what you want to do? Because if it is what you want to do, then I have to ask you, is StarCraft the game for you? Because StarCraft's a game of strategy, and it's also a game of macro and control. It's the idea of being able to build a lot of units, get a bunch of cool technologies, and then kill your opponent with them. Yeah? And come up with something like that. Now, right now, he is on 24 workers and yet four hatcheries. What's the point of him even having this many hatcheries? Good question. Does he expect that I won't attack him in the next 10 minutes? Because if so, we might be able to reestablish his economy. But because I was floating a lot of money here, I built a third CC and then added on four more barracks. I'm still floating a lot of money here, but I'm not spending that much time supply blocked, at least relative to my usual stuff. And as a result, I'm at 150 here versus 70 supply. So I don't even push out with all my units, actually. Half of them are still at the base, but these are 1-1 one, one versus 0-0 zero, zero Zerglings, and I also have nine medevacs. I'm more than confident here that I can just outright kill him. And that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It doesn't matter what units I've got. He has, if he has 34 Banelings, all right, cool. You've got 34 Banelings. That's all you can build. Like, you just burn your entire bank on that, and you don't have enough drones to support a Remax. You're not even close to a Remax. You actually just lost all of your overlords there, so you can't even build any more units. So I kill his base here. And here come the Banelings. Oh, no, Banelings. Banelings are bad. Yeah, they are. Let's have a look at my army supply and actually, yeah, long tab. There we go. Whoa, there we go. Okay, so this is the army supply, 105 to 25. Now, here I'm actually going to use a micro technique. I'm still building units in the background, just bear this in mind. I have queued them because I'm a noob, but at least I'm still building something. This, when you go past platinum, this you need to not do. Like, you need to be able to control properly. You need to be able to macro properly. This is not macroing properly. This is building, queuing up five marauders. But at least it means you're getting units out. It is better than not building any units whatsoever. If you're worried about the fact that your APM and your control is not good enough to be able to handle fighting a battle at the front while building units behind it, then by all means queue. But just bear in mind that you must end up being better than this eventually. This will only get you so far. All right. In this situation, I'm going to use a macro technique known as, micro technique in fact, known as marauder bombing. This is a really, really, really good way of getting rid of a lot of Banelings, especially if you're against a player that doesn't have a lot of control. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow him, and I'm going to drop Marauders on his Banelings. So here, as you can see, look at how many Banelings he just detonated to kill one Marauder. And there's a second one here as well. Let's rewind and see how many Banelings he used on that. This is towards the end of the match. I mean, you can imagine there's no way he's beating me from this position. But let's watch that again, and let's keep an eye on the Baneling count. Okay. So, push across the map, push, 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 push. 
He sees me coming, he builds a bunch of banelings in response. I kill all of his overlords, which is really unfortunate for him. There we go. So that all dies, and then he moves his baneling army in. So currently he has 34 banelings, yep. So let's keep an eye on... So my marines are going to take the brunt of this. My marauders are actually out of position. If I controlled this well, my marauders would have been here, which means they would have probably eaten all the banelings and my marines would have survived. So let's see how many marines get killed. None whatsoever. Like, none whatsoever. I get a quick lift up there. He's now on 31 banelings. Okay. Let's see how many banelings die to two marauder bombs. This is a really effective technique at getting rid of a lot of banelings if your opponent has bad control. Okay. That was eight banelings killed single marauder. And then we're going to see that again. We're going to see how it works. I think he realized that was a bad idea there. But I pushed these marauders forward. And there's another bunch of banelings gone. Now he's down to 14. So he's at half. And I'm going to move into position. I'm going to drop another one. And by that point, he just gives up completely. So what does this show? Well, it doesn't show great macro from me, but it also shows the vast difference in bad macro and dreadful macro. It also shows why all-ins are dreadful and you shouldn't be doing them at low level. All-ins are the kind of things that you can use to mix up your play when you already know your fundamentals, when you're good at StarCraft. They are used in tournaments for that very reason. They're unexpected. You will not learn anything at all if this is how you play. Just please, please don't. I learned from this. Like, I used to do Battlecruiser all-ins, and while they were funny, I didn't learn how to play TBT by doing Battlecruiser all-ins. I still don't know how to play TBT, but I'm a bit better at it than I used to be. So there's the difference, and it's just, it's cavernous, isn't it? And this guy was higher ranked than me in Platinum League. That makes me scratch my head, but I guess you can get there if that's what you do. If you all-in, then some people aren't ready for it, but... Yeah, that I could have killed them probably about 10 minutes ago. My macro was a lot weaker than it should have been. I've got so much mule energy here. Banking up to 200 is always bad. I could have probably plumped down 10 mules here on this expansion. I could have had 20 more racks at this stage. My armory went up, but I don't think I ever started 2-2, so that was a bit slacky as well. All sorts of things. I actually built a tech lab here to build drilling claws, and I completely forgot about them. So I made a lot of mistakes here, but not as much as that guy. So don't be that guy. Don't be destroyer. Don't be destroyer. Try and play a macro style and you will find that you have more fun. Because if you've got money and if you understand how to spend it, you can play whatever style you want. Because at these kind of low levels, it doesn't really matter what style you play. If your macro is better than the opponent, you're going to win anyway. So that's actually kind of a... Re it's a freeing idea, isn't it? It's the notion of, I can build whatever I want. I can build some stupid composition and it won't matter because I have enough money. My name's been Total Biscuit, ladies and gentlemen, and I still suck at StarCraft 2. I'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome back to another hype. Ugh, what? 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 Try again. Try again. Ugh.